Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Matt. Today I'm going to show you how to make a fold down workbench. Hopefully it's going to go on this wall here. As you can see I haven't got an awful lot of space in my garage. I'll try and show you. That's about it. Now I've been looking on YouTube and um, got a few different ideas to uh, build these fold down workbenches. I'm probably going to use a bit of a hybrid of all the ones I've seen. I'll do a shout out to all the people's videos that I've seen at the end to give them some credit. Um, this is my first video, um, so here goes. So the first job's going to be to clear all this stuff out of the way. I think I've got some wood I can use for the, uh, the pull down table, um, so bear with me while I clear this out of the way. I'll fast forward this bit, I promise. Hopefully, I've just got to the piece of wood I'm going to use for the top of the workbench. So this is what I'm going to use for the top. It's MDF. It's 15mm thick and hundred and eighty centimeters long so about six foot well seventy one inches and it's eighty uh, centimeters wide and um, it's probably a bit too long looking at the, uh, the le length of wall I've got to work for, which I'll show you now. So I'll show you the length of wall I've got, which is, I don't really want to go any wider than about five foot, so about 160 centimetres. Um, probably actually 150 because my, uh, my step ladder's here and I, uh, I don't know where else I'll put it if I um, go any wider. But it should it should give me a uh, a decent size um, workbench to use. Um, if push comes to shove, I can always make it bigger, get a different bit of top, etc. So as part of building the fold down workbench, I've had to work out how high it needs to be. Obviously, if you're building your own one, um, it's dependent on you and uh, how high, with how high you want it. I'm about just under six foot, but I've got quite short legs. Um, I've worked out I want the uh, the workbench to be about 40 inches high which is about 100, 100 centimetres so about a metre off the ground it should give me plenty of, plenty of room um, to work on from a, from a height point of view whilst not being too high and not being too low so um, we'll see how it goes I've actually decided to use the whole width of the work, length of the workbench I don't see the point in cutting it down um, the bigger the better really so I'm just going to move the ladders and uh, hang them somewhere else I can always make it smaller now as you can see the wall I've got here is brick which means I'm going to have to drill some holes and, and put some plugs in the wall um, I'm going to use the uh, red plugs I'll get one in a minute um, that take a 6mm hole I'm going to drill them all the way along the wall um, through some CLS timber um, mount the CLS timber on the wall and then I'm going to put a hinge on the CLS timber so this is the timber I'm going to use to uh, secure the uh, table to the wall as I said it's um, CLS timber I actually got it from home base it was only £1.95 a length um, it's a 2.4 metre length so using my best mass that means I've got to cut 60 centimetres off it to enable it to uh, cater for the whole width of the uh, fold down table the dimensions of it, just so I'm sure, are uh, 
39 centimeters by 63 so in old money I suppose that's what uh, two and a half by one and a half um, I quite like using this sort of uh, this sort of timber it's um, it's got the, the rounded edges you don't get loads of nasty splinters um, you do have to check when you're buying them though that they're uh, they're straight I don't know if you can see um, I always look down them like that make sure they're they're nice and straight when I'm buying them in the shop I don't have a van or anything so I have to um, I have to put them in the back of my car um, so I can't really go much above 2.4 meters otherwise I won't fit and I'll drive along with them sticking out the back is an estate car which does help so as I said I'm building this fold down workbench as I don't have a lot of space what I've used up until now is I've got actually got two of these um, they're made by Kita they're fold out uh, work tables they're, they're pretty good actually they hold clamps um, and they fold up quite small so you can carry them quite easily as you can see I've used it quite a lot while I was renovating my house that's why I've got most of the tools I've got I'll show you how it works anyway um, if you don't want to go the fold down uh, workbench route you can always um, try one of these I think you can get them in screw fix now for about 50 quid um, so I'll show you how it works anyway as part of this video so really simple, you just pick it up, put your hand in both the clips, push it, folds down like that, stick the arms out, fold the top up, and there you go, nice uh, stable workbench to use. As I say, it's um it's pretty well built. You can uh, you can stand on it. It would jump up and down and pretty heavy, but um, as I say. I've got two of them and uh, they are pretty handy, hopefully I won't need them after this so much but um, if you're going to, I do quite a lot of stuff at people's houses, I try and help them out um, and they're good to good to take with you, they, they fit in the back of the car pretty well. To cut the timber I'm going to use my uh, compound mitre saw, I bought this um, when I was renovating the house, it's battery powered, it's absolutely fantastic, I think it was the, one of the it was the first DeWalt one to take batteries. I'd already got the um, DeWalt XR battery powered gear, so um, it just seemed logical to, to get this bad boy. I really like it. Um, I've got the 4 amp hour batteries that I use. I find they last ages on this. Um, I do have a, a mitre stand that I, uh, that I have for the, for the saw. Um, I'll, I'll probably show you guys that in another video, as I say, it's my first video, don't get carried away. Um, but I'm just going to use it on this on this worktop for now because I'm not doing loads of precise stuff, I'm not going to be making that many cuts and um, it takes it's a bit of rigmarole to uh, fold out the, 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 uh, the specific uh, stand for the, um, for the mitre saw and I haven't got that much room and it's tucked away over the back there and I can't be bothered to get it out if I'm honest. So, as I said, I'm going to cut this length of CLS to 1.8 metres. Uh, doesn't have to be exact, but you don't want it too short, so better to be um, too long than too short in this case. Wear eye protection when I'm cutting on this saw. Um, it's only wood, but um, the last thing you want is something going up in your eye and uh, making it so you can't see. So good thing about this is it's got a, it casts a shadow where you're going to cut so um, you can see exactly where you're going to cut it um, I haven't got a support at that end so I'm having to hold it quite uh, quite firmly and as I said I don't want to I don't want to cut it under so I'm going to cut over it. 1.8 meters perfect so this isn't the actual piece of wood I'm going to use it's, it's the off cut but I want to show you um, how I'm working out what I need to do when I got the wall. So this is the this is the thickness as you can see here. I, I, I want to make sure that the uh, it's pretty well secured to the wall. So um, these uh, these screws are uh, 80 mil, um, I think. I'll just check. Not wanna, not wanna tell any rubbish. Yeah, 80 mil screws, and um, I want it to stick out a decent amount. Uh, hopefully you can see that through the wood and into the wall 
so it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to space the screw holes um, in the timber about 30 centimeters apart um, just so I've got plenty of purchase in the wall and uh, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to pre-drill the holes for the screws. Um, they're 5 mil screws, eight by 80 by 5 mil. Um, I'm going to drill them with a, uh, a 6 mil hole. Um, give a give a bit of room, and it'll mean that I can actually get the uh, get the screws um, through the through the wood. I'm not not planning on them actually biting into the wood. It's just that they're biting into the wall. That's the main thing. They won't move around. Mark the uh, where I want to put the holes. I'm going to put the first one about th three centimeters in, um, and then do them every thirty or so centimeters. So I've drilled the hole um, and screw. I'm just gonna check it goes through. Yeah, it goes through. It's, it's sitting out a little bit, and for a reason I'll, sh I'll show you in a minute. I'm actually gonna countersink the uh, the top. So I've got a uh, a countersink bit in my uh, little drill. I'm just gonna <laughs> countersink that out. The screw sits nice and flush now. So I've um. I've countersunk all the holes um, all the way along. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes, um, as you can see. Screw's going to go a decent amount into the wall. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, drill the holes in the wall. Um, first, I'm going to mark the height on the wall where I um, I need the uh, this kind of it's kind of like a wall plate to go. I'm going to use this. Um, Metal roll um, rather than a tape measure, just it's easier. So, I've marked a meter. Um, the meter's going to be where the top of the workbench is, so it actually needs to be, um, well, a meter less. The, the MDF 15mm, so a meter less 15mm, um, will be the rough height. So I've got my um, long spirit level. I think this is exactly 180 centimeters. Um, what do you know? Yeah, it is. So this will this will be the exact length of um, of the piece I'm going to use. I'm going to draw a level line so I know where to um, line up my piece of CLS for the wall. One of the things I've just noticed when I've put this up against the wall is that there's a slight bow in the wall so um, when I screw the CLS plate in it will probably probably bow a little bit so um, just to bear that in mind I might put a packer down the back if it's got a significant bow I'll show you that if I need to. As I said I'm going to use red plugs these are the uh, little creatures here they go in a six mil hole um, I get these from Screw Fix. They're by, I think they're by a firm called Uno. Um, they're really good because they've got this little lip on them. They don't go too far in, um, which can be a bit of a problem. I've got some other red plugs that I've used before, and you kind of lose them. If especially if you do quite a deep hole, I'm, I'm a bit careless sometimes, and the hole I put in is too deep. So um, I'm going to use these red ones. As I say, they take a six mil hole. I put a six mil hole in the uh, CLS, so you'll see um, hopefully a little bit of magic happen. So I've got my uh, SDS hammer drill, um, bit of a beast this, I got it uh, when I was renovating the house, um, as I said I've got a lot of the Devolt XR batteries for various tools that I've accumulated and um, this is one of my favourites, it's got a chisel bit, you know it's got chisel, you can chisel stuff off, it was great for moving tiles but it goes through brick walls like the Hulk. And uh, get the little red plug, put it in, get my uh, my screw, uh, little screwdriver, 
I'm going to put the first one in. I'm actually going to anchor it in. I've propped up the um, bit of CLS at the other end with just a bit of timber so it doesn't fall down. But it's kind of a lot easier once you get the first one in, and I'll um, I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to put this in now. That's not going anywhere. So I'm at the other end. Um, here's the bit of timber I was referring to. It's just a bit of a uh, big bit of thick bit of pine sleeper actually. I, I made a dining room table out of some pine sleeper. I'll um, I'll show you um, maybe show you that another day. I'm going to make a coffee table as well. But this this is where it. I said the wall was bowing. So it's actually it's bowing quite a lot. It's actually yeah. As a result of the bow, it's probably out by about the two or three um, centimetres along the back. It shouldn't matter too much um, because I can, I can offset the tabletop away from the wall slightly and take the bow out of it. But I'm going to um, I'm going to secure this end now. So that's nicely secured now. I'm going to do all the way along. Um, I'll show you a little trick. You're thinking, well, he's uh, he's done two ends, but he hasn't. Um, he hasn't. He hasn't. He can't get to the back of these other holes now. But I'll, I'll. I'll show you what you can do there. So I'm at the next hole. Um, I'll show you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take hole, drill another hole through. So that's that's gone all the way through. And I'm going to get the get the plug. Put it in there tap it all the way in then I'm going to get the screw I'm just going to put it on it and tap it and you hear you hear the noise change once you get to the right point you hear the tappy noise change so that's in the brickwork now I don't want to screw that in too far because otherwise I'll lose the plug so I'm just going to screw this now and you see it ripped to the wall and that's that's not going anywhere. Let me show you the rest of them. I need to do this quick because it's um it's about seven o'clock. I don't want to piss the neighbours off too much. Got the little hammer. Doesn't need to be a big hammer. Just tap them through. There's that change in sound. That means it's through. So as I say, I've got the uh, plate on the wall. Um, I'm going to use a hinge. This is a, it's called a piano hinge. I got it on, um, I got it on eBay. It was fifteen pounds. I've seen some other people use them. Um, it gives you hinge, a, a hinge, in, a hinge basically for the length of the worktop. Um, it's pretty sturdy and strong. You can get different colours. I went for the uh, blingy silver option. Um, it's a bit too long. It's uh, it's about it's about five centimeters too long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down a bit, um, just with a hacksaw. Marking um, stuff other than wood, I always use like a sharpie pen or just a permanent marker. It means you can see it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this to to length. It needs to be it could be just under 1.8. A bit bendy, which doesn't make it that easy. These clamps came with this table. They're um, they're pretty good. I'm selling this table, I don't know. Why am I making my own? So I'm going to now line up the piano hinge along the back. As I said, the um, the ply, sorry, the MDF is 15 mil, and these are about 39. So the hinge itself, the actual one half of it is is about 16 mil. Um, so it actually doesn't give me a lot of a lot of room to play with. So 15 mil from the back is about there. So I'm I'm actually going to mount the hinge um, flush with the front. So I don't know if you can. 
Hopefully you can see that. I'm, I'm pulling it right to the front so it's actually completely flush with the front of the uh, of the plate I've put on the wall. I'm going to set it in a bit so it's um, it's even on each side. Um, I am going to I am going to counter uh, sorry pilot hole in here because it's quite close to the edge. It might split um, and I don't. Hopefully you can see that. I don't want it to split, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mark it. Um, I'm gonna show you my a little tip for you. Um, one of these. So this is a uh, a center punch basically, um, and it's an automatic center punch. You push. I, I don't mind damaging this. You push on it. If you push it hard enough, you hear it click, and it leaves a hole. So it's a bit like a bradle. If you if you press it enough times. Leaves quite a good hole. I mean, if I get a uh, a screw, you can see that's that's quite a decent hole, and it'll 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 sit in it. I'm going to use um, I'm just going to use these screws here. I'll just randomly pick one out, but they are um, here's a hole. I've got a uh, little pilot bit. It's got a um, countersink bit on the end. I'm not going to go that far in. I'm not going to use that. Um, just drill this in, try and keep it straight. So that's that. Flip this up. Put the screw in. Hopefully the uh, pilot hole I use is big enough and this won't split. Yep, so that's good. Um, oh, there's a lot of screws. Um, the the hinges on. I've, I've put screws in in every hinge hole because um, I don't want it going anywhere. So that's the uh, that's the hinge attached to the plate. I have noticed that the um, where I cut the hinge, it's just it's just a uh, it bent at one end so I'm going to give it a tap with a hammer. I'm just going to kind of offer up the worktop to uh, to the plate and just check that it, it's going to fit basically. It should do, but sometimes things don't go according to plan. Yep, so there's plenty of room between the worktop and the wall. You know I was worried about the wall being um, out and it, it bowing. Well, it doesn't appear to be an issue. The idea is it's going to fold down like this, and I'll have a. Uh... Let's see. I'll have a nice big worktop to work from, which will be great. I've got the um, the new workshop laid out on my uh, little work table. What I'm going to do now is, um, and this is what a lot of other people that have built these on YouTube do, because I'm going to want to um, clamp things to the edge of my. Uh, Edge of my worktop. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna build a frame because MDF's quite um, flimsy, really. It's only 50 mil. It's gonna flex. So I'm gonna build a build a frame um, around it, give it a bit more rigidity. I'll probably put some cross members in as well, just to stop it flexing that much more. I might put some in at 45 degrees because, um, as they teach you at school, a triangle stronger than a square. Um, and I've got my mitre saw, so I can, I can use that to cut perfect 45 degree uh, mitres. So, so I've mitered both the ends uh, of the skirts. Uh, one end, the other end is the same. I've actually run out of wood now. I thought I had um, four lengths of CLS. But I only had two, so uh, I'm going to have to uh, wait till tomorrow now and get some after work. Hopefully home base has still got some. And uh, try and finish off tomorrow. So see you tomorrow.